Hello. Good evening. It's an honor for me to be here and especially you tell you where you know where the internet is tell and to tell you where the internet is. I work to these um, stations and I looked for the internet for them over the last two years. Music? All right. The internet is f new country for everybody. Again, you know this uh, citation. The internet is a new country for all of us. Yeah, that's how bad it sometimes is for us when Angela Merkel, the German Chancellor, says things about the internet. Sometimes you have the feeling the internet, uh, the politics doesn't understand what the internet is. There are different people, like uh, someone from the Chaos Computer Club, talk about the, that it is a place. In this place, Senator Stevens said, the internet is not something it just does something. It's not a big truck. It's a series of tubes. No, he translates it. The internet is not really a series of tubes. Earlier, it really was that you entered the internet and left it. Really, I don't understand anything about technology, but nowadays even my wife said that we have to go to the internet. Have I already entered the internet? I entered it. That's easy. That's so easy it is with AOL internet. Rosbecker made commercials for these CD-ROMs, these AOL CD-ROMs. And the questions, am I in the internet, is a question that is interpolated. And we are always just short in time in the internet. Some say it always had um, other connotation because of the uh, problems he had. Another thing is that the internet closer com comes closer to us. That's like the telephones. It used to be that telephones were on the outdoors, on the sh small rooms. You have to leave the uh, flat to um, or go to specialized um, chairs to telephone. And then later the phones entered the homes, and then they got wireless, and then they were smaller and smaller, until today there are small animals that live in our pockets. We we couldn't the the, hand, the cell phones and the computers using. It keeps it's a symbiotic life. That's ich me, ich me, uh, I wanted to show that we melt with the technology. And instead of going into the internet, we are in the internet, and we are getting like a cyborg. And the cloud is also a new word. The cloud is everywhere. About what does it mean? Uh, the Martin Hase. Martin Hase tells us he we don't really know where it is. I ask myself, where is the internet? This is my own route at home. You can't really see it, it's up below my desk. And then I followed it, it's outside in the old burning um, farms. And we want to open the window. Can we also lo open the lower part of it? The, here where the cables go through. The internet is physics, it goes into the distribution unix. It's uh, ADSL. I had then opened the box and and so it was it in, on the inside. And he then used some kind of sensor to open it. So I am connected to point 11 instead of point 13, and that's done out on the street. And suddenly they had opened the street and the cables. And there's a whole hierarchy of cables. Yeah, we have we have sometimes destroyed cables. That happens. It also happens with power cables, and uh, and cable TV also goes sometimes. So it is a physical thing where the um, digging machine can go over, and we then end 
then we end up for a whole block in a, in a box like this. That is Martin Hase. I had this distribution box. This is here where the internet lives. Well, not really, but it is a part of the internet network. Internet is here. It's really where the networks go together. So, so where the internet are joined. Here are only the cables that go to the final customer. Or and they go to the telecom, where a couple of blocks on. And it's this building. The building is not that tall. And in, in, during the Second World War, or just after the Second World War, the LIA is all, 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 listen to the telephone connections here in Schöneberg. The network is a connection of networks. There are maps like this. That's a big area for level three, and they have a lot of cables worldwide. Who knows what they can listen to? And this company also has his maps online. And if I make a ping from my computer or trace route and I want to look, how do I get somewhere else on the internet? Usually it goes over Frankfurt. Frankfurt has a um, autobahn coil, so a main uh, crossing crossroad and a major airport and an, in a small uh, industrial area, I found this D6, it is the most important uh, internet point. Why it's not uh, possible to show me where the uh, joints of the internet are. They have talked a little bit around it, but we are building, a, uh, we are changing something right now. We are under con they were under construction, so couldn't show it. I then asked them why uh, the intelligence service couldn't listen to the the this internet joints. Then that's you can ask that for the intelligence services. Is it a fact that fifteen to twenty percent are listened in, and that is a law? It is, it's written like that in the law. The intelligence service may listen in to 25% of the uh, foreign traffic. I don't know how it works. I can tell you how it might work. Is, uh, there are different methods where how to get data out of the network. How could you get data out of the networks? You can uh, split the cable. So you make a physical connection to the cable, and you make a Y cable, and then you put the data in two directions, normal procedures. But does that happen in these kicks? That ca I cannot tell you. Um, you, f you feel that he is a little um, concerned about the law, and he cannot tell you. And Disney is one of the biggest internet exchanges in the world, and he can't tell you. And because he didn't sh show me where the internet is, and it's different buildings, and they are all uh, unencrypted, he said. So I asked a fast food chain. Hello. Hello, I have no, another question. Do you know if the internet is here? Can I get the internet here somewhere? Internet? So the lady didn't really know that she was close to the joints of the internet. Even though you can see it easily on the aerial photos. You can see the the blue arrows are is on the internet exchanges, and the yellow was the fast food chain. This is a photo of one of the big DKX installations, and here is a cable uh, site. The NSA are not allowed to listen here, but it can happen. The question is then: How does the internet go from DKX to, for example, the United States? So. 
Uh, so your entropic will have lived this this cable, and there are two ways to make redundancies. So it's through New Norway and the UK, and this is by the same company where he is not telling a name, and he asked for access. If prison and temporal exist at all, nobody knows how it works, uh, except for Snowden. And if it happens, then it would have ha been happening in Butte in the UK. And it's probably top secret, and probably through some time. So we can't just open our connection because it's <laughs> secret and connected. They built site in a, a popular German newspaper, they left that in, but um, us not. That is the network of Greg's cable. It's a worldwide map of the internet traffic. A lot of data goes through those cables. Uh, the cables look like this. In the middle there are just really tiny glass fiber cables, and the others are protection against different um, internet enemies, like this shark. And they sometimes just chew onto the network, internet. And there were in cables that were chewed on. There are other cables. This is a prism map from the NSA. They also listen to the internet. So I moved, went to the United States and I wanted to look where the internet came to the world. And that was here. That is the UCMA. That is the University of Los Angeles, California. And in this one floor, is that also the NSA? There were some uh, noise problems here. Uh, he lo apparently lost his microphone. Exactly. No, we switched to a different microphone. That is the UCLA in California. And 1964, the internet was born in this room. In this room, the first internet connection was created, and I sound, uh, met a professor who worked there, and who was there where the internet wa first internet connection was created. You just walk into the 1960s, and you feel it. It's the color, and you feel like I, you go back to when I was a young man. He showed us this room, and it didn't used to be a museum, but it is a museum now. And you have to imagine this big box, a huge Fritz box. It's a router, very popular in Germany. And this connection used to stand in a storage room, but they now recognize it as an important part of the history, and he's very proud about this. That machine over there is the first piece of internet equipment. So. Can I ask you a question? How many evolutions do you know where you know exactly when it begins and exactly where it begins within four square feet? Not too many, but here you can. 1969, in those four square foot, exactly on this place, there was this first internet processor. And the situation was the following. In the UCLA, they had a computer, and in Stanford, at Stanford Research Institute, they also had a computer. And they wanted to transmit the session login. You have to imagine. The telephone connection from Charlie to Bill, Charlie tapped it, the L, and he said, yeah, the L was transmitted. Did you get the O? Yeah, the O was transmitted. And at the G, it crashed, and it broke. So what was the first information on the internet? It was low, like low and behold. So the first word of the internet was low because the connection broke after that. He talks a lot about that. Low was also about C and be amazed. And he made a PowerPoint presentation and got a lot of honor of different people so that he had the first internet connection. So I asked him, where the internet connect lives today, and he gave, gave the internet over to the smartphone, and so the question is where the internet lives, and the answer is, that's difficult to answer. Let me search the internet for you. 
so it was fun, but it was a little bit narrow. The ARPANET was the first beginning of the internet. It looked like this. Universities from were connected by a military institution. They were given money to connect with each other, to share uh, calculation um, potential. So I moved to, with a, fr a friend to a, a different place where they, where all the cables on the U.S. West Coast towards Asia arrive. The town is known for this wall. Everybody sticks his chewing gums on it. It's a bubblegum alley. But on the website Christum, we could also look at where the cables are. So we moved, went to this beautiful area and also looked at the traces of internet. It was nearly as beautiful as the background screen from Windows XP. If you look at it, there are similarities. But there were all the very clear signs that there were um, internet cables like these never dug here. And it was very well hidden in AT&T internet and there were tank protections and uh, a small telephone connection. And I went there and I played stupid and asked if I could look in. AT&T, how can I help you? Hello, this is Merton Hendricks. We are two journalists and poets. How can we? We want to know where the internet is. Is this here? No, I'm afraid not. Why? No, no. This is actually a secure AT&T location. We can't really have you here. So could you come out? No, no, I'm sorry. I cannot come out. Are you there at all or are you somewhere else? I'm at the station, but yeah, I can't, um, uh, he stammered around and couldn't get us in, but we looked a little, little more around and followed the cable trail and got there to the bloody nose trail, which sounded like an omen. No, we didn't find cables, we find eel, but the cables are here for California from, to Asia, and then of a toilet building we found a survival camera looking at um, manholes where the internet cables run into the sea. There are no, not a lot of signs, but if you pay a little attention, you can see them. Okay, I thought maybe we found something, but I'm interested in how does the internet change places. So we went to the headquarters of Google, and in at the headquarters, you don't see the data centers, but you see all the internet boxes everywhere. And I, I think I'm going to interpret this differently. And Google, where is Larry Page's house? I took the navigation from my Google smartphone and standing on f in front of a villa in the night with my rental car. And it was a dead end with multiple entrances. And suddenly there was a car, and I got a little scared. Oh, let's get away. I think he had as much scare as I did. It's a Lexus and a man, and he drove fast past me. And he opened that garage automatically. So I drove to Mark Zuckerberg, which is one of his friends. And I also stood in front of a house, and I asked a guy in a jeep. I wanted to know if this is a house where Mark lives. You can't say that. Can you tell me anything? No. All I can tell you, you can't be from this house to that house. And Mark Zuckerberg bought four extra houses to have more privacy. So the uh, boss of Facebook wants more privacy and use 30 million to buy the four houses around his high own house. They are also very sympathetic um, internet people. They have an old temple in San Francisco that looks like the Internet Archive logo. And Bruce is also here. Say hello. 
and there can you can surf into the uh, historic internet, and they host a lot of media fr from the free culture. And everything ha happens in this old kitchen, and the servers are standing where the saints you know in the old days. I feel like the internet we're building is somehow the global pine, and somehow we're building that is more than the pieces. It gives people the ability to do some things and scale like never possible before. So Bruce said, Bruce loves the internet, and he does it differently. We think we should have what is valuable to us, close to us, what, and we want to have a primary copy of the internet that has millions of books and videos and billions of pages and it actually lives here in this building, this former church. And then I got interested in how this is done. And I asked, uh, met these people with my colleague Henrik in the background, and this is Bruce's dog. My name is Boris, I work at Google, and I am an infrastructure manager. This is really the machine room behind the uh, search engine the networking, the servers, and everything around. So this is the guy for the Google Insights Tour, because Google is uh, the really, really big data centers who showed how this is done in scale. But also they made it a bit different. I asked him how it feels inside there, and he said, you feel the noise in the air, and it's not quiet at all, and the wind goes through it. But the interesting thing is, um, the photos you see, they were sometimes before Google published them, changed. It used to look like this, and then they made it look more beautiful to make the internet look even more beautiful in these images. And he also put deers onto the uh, uh, data center. But it also suggested that where Im uh, animals are on the way, also our data feels well. When we visit this on this camp, we can also get that. The campaign that also finally is called "Where the Internet Lives" is how the inter how Google tries to suggest to the other people that they are they should trust them. These are the different um, um, places where Google has or uh, its own computers. Usually, they are built close to the water, and we searched for many hours. And this is the center of Google in Berlin. And when we went there, there was a guy who said, we mustn't take photos here. So I moved to a different place to look how the internet changes places. It's Rundstoff in Österreich. In the night close to Linz, something happened. This woman, I asked what happened. I hope you understand her. No, Google was... I have no idea what she says. It's like a TV station, this Google. In fact, Google, in this small village in over Austria, bought an area for computers, and that is the major mayor. And he didn't know that they were a great place for computer centers. I didn't know that the um, power station has changed uh, anything about the, other than a lot of power cables go through this area. We did not know that three data cables went through our area and we did not know that the river was that big an issue about uh, computer centers. And now it's becoming a data behavior on the information highway. You can see here that the internet and the, the computer centers have need power and gas phaser cables which are on the uh, streets. But it's also really close to the East European border where there used to be a radio antenna where the Americans sent a radio towards the east. So he showed us the area with the um, power station at the moment, there are still plans on it, but he, they will be Google campus there. And here you can see a, a concrete shaft with a lid on it. And under this, one of these data 
layer connections run. I can't open it because it's locked closed. So still, I couldn't come to the internet. So we visited Hacker Farmer. He's really called Hacker Farmer, but it's coming from the cutting of wood, which is Hacken in German, and not from hacking in the computer sense. And the Hacker Farmer sold his um, ground to Google, and now he is a millionaire, and he has a, a tractor which drives over the fields using GPS, and Google helped him doing that, and on this field, Google bought, maybe tractors will be run there. This tractor has a, a GPS connection that really is really exact. And the crazy thing is that by Google coming to that place, a lot changed. In this town, for like seven years, the data center has not been built, but a lot of people, uh, a, a children's kindergarten where it is an additional English teacher. And you can hear that English is everywhere. Children sing about internet and iPhones, and it's a great thing. They sing a song, an English song about uh, bananas in the sky. That's some of the songs they sing about. And now we go to a different place, Gibraltar. Gibraltar is also a well-known place. So we went there, and in this uh, cliff, there are tunnels with streets, and especially a special law that allows certain companies to do certain things. And, and here he says, Gibraltar is certainly a place where some of the internet lives. A lot of gambling and gaming, everything that has something to do with casino or bets, that lives in Gibraltar. In Gibraltar, there are a lot of gambling companies because there is very little tax on gambling and it's quite legal in opposite to other country, European countries because it's owned by Great Britain. So it is a European gambling uh, hole. Sometimes there are places where the rent is as high as in New York, where a lot of East European people live. And we were allowed to enter a tunnel in an old Atomar bun bunker, so we go deeper and deeper into this tunnel that where certain missions were run during the Second World War. So, security checks. Your names, Henrik and Moritz. Also, what was a friend? Th that is four or five hundred meters deep into the cliff, and it looks like a ship because it was built by a marine. And we looked at the places where World War missions were run. And Eisenhower himself lived in there for six months. Miss Churchill also lived there for six weeks. The two of them lived down here for the very peak decision-making town time of the uh, World War II. These two lived here in this bunker, and now the high security data centers live here. And we are allowed to enter, but we cannot make any pictures. You had to enter a pin code, and about like this it looks. And sounds like this. That is, of course, only a demo picture. So I finally found where the internet lies. And it is so boring. And I asked again, where is the internet? So before I talked about cable, TAT14, the C cable, in the first publication and in the radio, and I contacted a te cable technician who showed me a lot of photos. This is in North. This is in Silt, where deep sea cable goes in. It looks like this, and this, and here. You can go look for it yourself. This is how it looks when the insect goes into the sea. This is not very specular. Spectra. And I believe the internet. Ich, I don't think the internet lives in the technique, but the internet lives in the heart of the humans who use it. This is John Perry Barlow, who was an uh, EFF 
um, activist, and uh, we visit him, and he showed us cat photos. Uh, and he has written the independence of the independence of the internet. This is a fry from activists. And th these are also internet activists that you've seen on the scene just before me. And this is also, this is the internet. You are the internet. We are the internet. We use the internet and we put in stuff into it and we take care of the internet. And for that, thank you very much.